Hello everybody and welcome to Behringer and this is going to be a little how to video and how I do my girder bridge sections and weather them up. Now here you're looking at the one over the Behringer station and this is how I had started doing them with just a plain coat of grey primer. I'm going to show you how I'm going to weather them. Here you have a girder bridge section which belongs to the TMD. Um, there's some work going on over there which is why this is sitting over here. And here you can probably pick it up in the light, the various colours and weathering that's been applied to this girder bridge section as opposed to, if I just take you round to the, um, as you can see here, that's the difference. So it really is quite heavily weathered. And I'm going to show you how to do this. Um, so if you stick with me, I will show you how you're going to do it. So bear with me. Now for this little project, um, just to, just for demonstration purposes, I've got this um, leg of the footbridge which I never used uh, for my train footbridge, which is currently over my station. But essentially, it will give you the feel because it gives you that kind of. Um, if I just show you, it will give you that kind of girder bridge kind of look and it gives me a chance to hold the end. So, but it's essentially it's the same thing. So we're just going to assume that you've put your girder bridges together and it doesn't matter whether you prime them or don't prime them but the essential thing is is that you do it all when it's wet. So we're going to show you that in so just a minute. So this we're going to be using two colours and the first one is a grey and they're both matte and it's matte 78 and that's a Revell colour and the second colour I'll be using is a matte 37 which is also by Revell now this is completely up to you in terms of colour choices um, you could try this in a sort of rustier, sort of more earthy brown and experiment, but this is what paint I had to hand and what I thought I'd experiment with and it, as it turns out, I really liked. So the first thing to do is you go with your red and you're also going to need a paintbrush and so the talcum powder that we used from before for the stonework. So first of all you just um, Let's get that out of the way. You just paint this on. Again, you don't have to be too. In the, even in my even in the ones that I did, I wasn't particularly careful about it. So you don't have to worry about being a bit slapdash. You can just do this fairly fairly quickly. You don't have to be at all careful with this. and you just slap it on and then you basically do this all the way around or for the whole length of your bridge however long that may be now the important thing with this to remember is a lot of this has got to be done when it's wet so don't let the paint go off whatever you do so just it's so there you go it didn't take no time at all to do that bit so we're now going to move on to the next bit, which is the grey, using the same brush. And what you're doing is you're sort of, basically you're mixing, you're mixing it in, the, the grey with the, with the red. Just swirl it around, swirl it around, swirl it around. To make sure it penetrates it and it kind of gives you this kind of um, kind of I don't know it's kind of used sort of feel like it's worn you just kind of earthy kind of browny kind of but the thing is it what it is is it's better to use a brush than use than using spray cans because you won't get the right finish it's important as well to make it convincing is to leave all the brush marks and it doesn't necessarily need to be perfect in fact it's better that it isn't perfect so you just sort of it doesn't matter 
um, and if it's if you think it's and also the other thing about this is that if you think it's too grey or it's gone to just add a bit more red or add a bit more grey to you find that you've got a blend that you're kind of happy with and um, that's pretty much it as it stands but I've just sort of realised or felt, feel like this corner is a bit too sort of grey so I'm going to add a little bit more red to it like I said, don't be afraid to sort of play around with it just to mix it up a bit. So if you're not happy, just keep just experimenting until you kind of got this sort of pattern and it doesn't have to be uniform. Because that's not the point. So. And the thing is, when it all dries, you'll see the kind of undertone and the red that comes through it as well as the, as well as the grey. And you just leave that to dry. And as you can see, there's some there's some red to it, and there's a bit, bit of grey to it. And like I said, it's all about just sort of brushing it rather than put a bit more red in that just to. And when you're happy with it, you can just leave it. And this is at this point that you just let it dry now, however long it takes. Um, the only thing is, is like I said, with the grooves, just make sure that the paint doesn't fill it. Just get rid of all the excess paint. So it's a very quick job. It's done in a very short space of time. And then it's, you can just see it's got various, various colours in it. It's got the grey and the red in it. That's how I do it. And then now you just let it dry. So come back to me when it's dry and I will show you what we do with the talcum powder. Hello everybody. And just to let you know that this is now fully dried. And it's cured overnight. And as you can probably tell in the light, it's got a tinge, the red tinge underneath. And now we're going to do the final stage, which is to age it. Now to do that, you need your talcum powder and you need to pretend that this is fire and that you're going to douse the fire with water being talcum powder as you see it's there's lots of talcum powder on there and then now what you need to do is to buff it like you're buffing a pair of shoes and you've just got to work it in and work it in and work it in until you, you leave this residue but you don't leave any of the talcum powder so it's kind of got a white tinge to it without actually having any talcum powder on it so you just keep as you can see it's just you just take your soft brush and you just keep doing that until you create the effect you just keep buffing it and buffing it and buffing it and buffing it Like I said before, what the talcum powder does is it leaves this kind of tinge to it and it ages it. And again, it's just going to carry a bit more. I'm going to carry a bit more. Onto, onto it until you're totally satisfied with it. It's a bit of a, bit of a messy job. And then there you have it. It's the finished product right there. You might be able to see the effect that the talcum powder has, but believe me, it does make a difference. It just gives, it just dulls down the whole thing and it ages it all. And then once you put it up, 
you can see the whole difference and like I said you could see it yesterday when I showed you the actual bridge itself I mean that's what you should end up with as a finished product and as you can see in here it's very similar I mean obviously the pattern isn't quite the same because it won't be because it's always different but that's pretty much the effect that you get so and then that's how it looks when it's all done and dusted so thanks for watching feel free to comment and subscribe and use any of the techniques that I've used after all that's why I do these videos so um, until the next time bye from Behringer